Hey guys, it is Friday, June the 9th, 2023, and this is going to be my daily futures recap for the futures trading action on Friday, June the 9th, 2023. Before we get into it, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, and I'm not soliciting you to purchase, sell, transfer, or do anything with your securities. Uh, so let's first start with uh, some of the things that I have come to realize and I am setting them as quote unquote iron rules. Okay, so iron rules of day trading. Number one, thou shalt not place an order in the market until after Frankfurt Open. So by far the most money I have lost has been between the hours after resettlement to Frankfurt Open. The market is illiquid and I'm not doing it anymore. I have I have wised up, um, and the trading day for me shall not begin. An order shall not be placed in the market until after Frankfurt opens. Maybe I'll miss a few opportunities because of that. Whatever, I don't care. Um, I'm not I'm not trading anymore until after one. Uh, two two a.m. Eastern Standard or one a.m. my time. So thou shalt not place an order in the market until after Frankfurt Open. Number two, thou shalt only enter the market on a limit order. I have tried market smashing before, and I know that ICT will sometimes enter in at the market. I've said this before, I cannot do it. Um, if I, I'm more than happy to uh, miss a trade uh, and, and just let the market run against me. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, if I can't get in on a limit order where I want to, I'll just miss the move and, and I'll trade something else. Thou shalt be greedy with thine entries and conservative with thine exits. So, I've left a lot of money on the table because I don't take profit, or because I want to get all the way to the next objective. It's usually a liquidity target or inefficiency. Um, and so, what I have come to found is that there's nothing wrong with. Uh, taking profits early. In fact, one could say that you have more money in your account doing that than you did before. So you're going to take hundreds, thousands of trades, and you know if you if you get at if you get out after five points and a thirty point move, that's okay. There will be more moves. Um, so we'll talk about taking greed in ex in entries and. Uh, We'll, we'll look at some examples of that, of what I mean by greedy with the entries and conservative with the exits. Um, one thing you can do with that is if you're trading multiple contracts, take the bulk of it off uh, early and then leave one for the full for the full target. And four, the only measure of success is whether you have more in your account than you did, it, did yesterday. There is no measure of success for getting the entire swing there's no measure of success for getting the, the absolute bottom and top tick. The only measure of success is if you had $5 in your account when the day opened, do you have $10 now? If you had $10,000 in your account before the day opened, do you have $10,500 now? It's the only objective is to be uh, is to have more in, more in that account after the trading session than before the trading session. That is the only objective. And if it's you made ten dollars on the day, that's ten more dollars than you had before, and that's ten more dollars that you don't actually have to go work a real job for. So, all right. With that being said, um, let's go through the futures today and look at any opportunities that we had. So we're going to block out the new financial day. And remember, we don't start until 2 o'clock. We're not putting in an order before Frankfurt Open, which is right on my crosshair here. So if you're listening to this video and you don't actually have it up on your screen, then you're going to be pretty confused when I'm pointing at things and you don't see, you don't see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't place an order until after this Frankfurt Open. So let's look at any opportunities we had on the uh, ES. I'm going to breeze through the 13 products that I look at. 
I'm not going to go super in depth. Just look at some of our of our uh, entries that we could have could have taken. Now, a um, couple things. A lot of ICTs levels are fifty percent levels. So what I've done is I've just created a fib template that simply uh, I might actually make make this thicker for you to, to actually see it more cleanly on the uh, on the screen no dotted line um, a lot of ICT's levels whether it's the mean threshold of an order block or consequent encroachment of an inefficiency so a gap a fair value gap or volume imbalance a lot of his levels are just 50s so you might want to create a fib on your trading view that's literally just 0.5 because a lot of your entries are going to be there. So we opened up the new financial day and before, prior to Frankfurt Open we had a little bit of a manipulation. Coming into the London Open we ended up trading down so we had a manipulation down. And in terms of any potential entries that you could have taken, um, remember one of the things that I'm going to harp on is that it's okay to miss a move. Um, there's a lot of products out there. I trade 13 products, and more likely than not, if you use a greedy entry on all of your 13 products, you're probably going to get something. So what Price was coming down and, and doing here on the London Open is we were working the uh, consequent encroachment of this wick from Thursday in the PM session. And had you taken an entry there, that would have been a beautiful entry. And one of the things that I want to stress is that we're not trying to get the next full leg. We're usually going to aim for, at this point, I'm aiming for maybe half. So we entered at 42.85 and we get the bulk off at like 42.92 and that would be seven points. Um, yeah, so anyways, we want to be greedy with the entry. So, you it you know, here's the thing. ICT says the bodies tell the story and the wick, wicks do the damage. Well, you want to be the damage. Um, I know I'm rambling here. I never really am very structured with this. Um, ICT says the bodies tell the story and the wicks do the damage. And that's true for tape reading. But for actually trading, you want to be in the damage. <laughs> you want to be the damage. Um, one of the things that I've noticed about the markets is that these swings will generally go further than you think. Not always, but like 80% of the time they're going further than you think and that there's going to be some sort of a liquidity push, some sort of a wick, basically. Um, and it's going to go further than you think. And so you can tape read with the bodies in mind, but when you're actually, in my opinion, when you are actually trading on limit orders and you're trying to get excellent entries, try to be the damage. Like, go further than you think because uh, you'll probably be pleased with the results. I mean, worse comes to worse, you miss a move and who cares? Trade something else. So, anyways, uh, we had an order block here that Price was, was working on the... Um, I'll highlight that. So, here was our order block to the left that we were uh, we were working during the London session, and as you can see, it came all the way down to the consequent encroachment of the final wick, and then we bounced from there. Um, other opportunities. So, in terms of getting in before our opening move there was a model 22 entry overnight so what is a model 22 entry it's when we break structure we form a fair value gap and then price comes down into that fair value gap um, so we didn't end up running the sell side the sell side that I would have wanted to have seen on the London during the London session but nevertheless, we ran some local sell side. And as you can see, price traded above the prior structure. Okay, that's the first qualification. After, really, I would have wanted it to see trade below to uh, 42.83. And I still think that these lows are going to get run next week. Don't worry, I think that's going to happen. But anyways, uh, do we form a fair value gap? Yes, we do. And so you had... Uh, a fair value gap form here that you could have been in on a limit entry. So in terms of the overnight session, I think you had two uh, pretty decent opportunities. So number one, the London open, uh, London open low, 
You could have been in on the consequent encroachment of this long wick. That's an inefficiency that Price was re-delivering, so that would have been at 42.85. Your second opportunity on the 15-minute time frame was a Model 22. So Price came up, it broke structure, and then it traded back into a fair value gap. Now, you could get long at the uh, right at the fair value gap, 42.92, and you would have taken heat to 42.89.50. However, if you wanted to be in the damage, that oftentimes, whenever you see a fair value gap and an order block that are kind of paired together, uh, it's going to trade into the, it's, it's going to wick or it's going to damage to the next level. I hope that makes sense. So we had a fair value gap that formed and it damaged us to, it wicked us down to the order block that was sitting below. Now, why would price do that? Well, because there are break even stops there and it provides the liquidity to, to drive us higher. So you could have definitely been in on the, let me see, the mean threshold of this order block. So if we're using our, ooh, it actually didn't quite get there. It was one tick short. Wow, crazy. It's one tick short of the mean threshold of this order block. So you would have either needed to play higher than the mean threshold or would have been in on the fair value gap or the mean threshold of that order block didn't get hit. But it did trade down into it. Okay, uh, I took one trade on the, let me see. Um, after equities open, we run higher. We're up at 43.24, and I'm sure that that's a higher time frame level. I was looking on the weekly chart to see what it was trying to trade into. I couldn't find it. We're um, Basically, we're, we were, we're trading up into a, um, an order block from August. But in terms of trying to get the top tick on, um, on ES today, I just wasn't seeing it. Back to our 15-minute chart. We trade up on our equities open impulse move. And you could have been in there from the London, from the London session. And in terms of being conservative with the exits, I would say that had you gotten in on that Model 22, okay, and now some of y'all are going to be like, whoa, Reese, that's, how are you making any money if you're that conservative? But I, I think that personally, okay, check this out. I think personally a good target for the bulk of your position, like if we're just being conservative with our targets, just right above that prior high, it would have been filled nice and clean, no stress. Um, and you would have made 12 points. Now you could have, let's say you were trading five contracts, you could have taken four off just above that prior high to the left. Okay, that's 11, let's say we're banking 12 points, right? We're banking 12 points from our Model 22 entry overnight. So we, we bank four contracts and we let the, the last one run. And that's pretty stress-free trading. You just, you just, you know, it ended up trading above that prior prior high to the left that we made on Thursday. No stress. Yeah, okay, you're leaving money on the table, sure. But if you take parcels there at the left, your your mental, your emotional health is going to be just going to quick, quickly and easily just bank some money that you didn't have before. You could leave one on so you could you had five contracts, take four off at 4303 and then let one run. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like that's being conservative with your because you don't know how far this this equities open impulse is really going to go. We didn't even really manipulate at the 8:30, the 8:30 uh, news release. Speaking of which, by the way, there was another trading opportunity here on this uh, this order block that 8:30 ended up trading down into. Now let me see if we would have been to the mean threshold of that order block because that's kind of what I'm always looking for. So I'm looking for these mean thresholds, consequent encroachments. Yes, so you would have actually bottom ticked it. I don't know with your broker, with the spread, um, if you use the mean threshold of this order block that I'm highlighting. Again, if you're just listening to my voice and you don't have the video open, that's, you're kind of wasting your time. Um, trade down into this order block here. If some some of your brokers, whatever, if, if, if you got in and you weren't hit on the spread, you could have been in on that. Okay, uh, I ended up taking a trade on an Apex evaluation account. Um, it wasn't really an optimal trade. I didn't, did, not, did end up making money, 
But our next real opportunity is that when price came back down, and it came back down quickly, I got long. Uh, actually, remember, I'm down on a five-minute chart, y'all. So if you look at the top left, and now I'm on a five-minute chart. I was long at this first order block. Now, price ended up trading lower, uh, but I was looking for a position like uh, like like this. I was looking to, to just get above that uh, local high. Now, I ended up taking quite a bit of drawdown. I took six six and three quarters points of drawdown, and it wasn't an op it wasn't a fantastic trade. Uh, but I I did end up uh, I banked four. I traded five uh, minis. It's on a demo account. It's an Apex valuation account. I banked eight points on the first four, and then I think I let the next one go up the way around ten. So that I ended up getting long here at this first order block. Back to the 15-minute chart. Let's see what price did. Price came down and respected our 15-minute. Got two order blocks here in the 15-minute, but we damaged. <laughs> we wicked. We damaged down to. Um, I'm saying damage because that's what ICT calls wicks and tails. So we ended up damaging all the way down to the fair value gap. Now, if you're being greedy with your entries, right? Greedy with the entries, conservative with the exits. Could you have seen, could you have gotten in on these three wicks? Well, number one, what time of the day it is? Well, this was lunch. This was New York lunch, right? So we're expecting stop hunts during lunch. And so it made sense the price came down here uh, and damaged down to this fair value gap, re-delivered down to this price. I'll be accurate. It re-delivered down to this um, down at this fair value gap. Now, I think reasonably speaking, if you were trading this on the 15 minute time frame, you could have definitely thrown in an order. If you're scaling in longs, uh, you could have thrown in an order at each order block and the fair value gap. You would have been filled on all three. Uh, but in addition to that, yeah, could you have just bet on this fair value gap at 42.94 and then and then got filled like bottom ticket? I think so. I mean, I, I don't think it was unreasonable. But let's say you didn't get the, the fair value gap that's down here could have hit the second order block. I ended up, like I said, I was long somewhere here in the first order block. But the second order block here, which is also around this break of market structure shift to our left, so another order block. Um, you could have been long on the second order block as well. And either way, you were going to be uh, pretty immediately profitable. And then if you were immediately profitable, like I said, I personally, okay, Personally, I would have aimed, and I did, just being conservative with the exits, just aim right above the first internal high that we made. And we end up reaching it. And so those are really your opportunities on the ES today. I took a similar trade on the uh, on the Dow. So looking at the YM now, uh, obviously they're all pretty similar. There was an opportunity, uh, and I took a trade in here. I was long somewhere in here. Um, my executions get erased on these evaluation accounts after the uh, day is over. So the Dow comes down, manipulates during the London session, break structure, uh, break structure at 515, trades back into an order block on the 15 minute time frame, uh, consolidates, and then ends up manipulating one more time at 8.30, does not make a, does not trade into the, the London low. So we end up getting our London low at 7.41. And then price makes an impulse move above liquidity over uh, yesterday at 15.45. So we break above that liquidity and we end up trading above the one week uh, volume imbalance low. So uh, the, the YM on the weekly as a liquidity void or volume imbalance here. We ended up poking above it and we traded almost on the weekly time frame, almost uh, to the main threshold of our weekly order block. We didn't quite get there. Price then comes back down and bounces off of this 15 minute breaker at uh, that we formed in the overnight session. So a, a nice entry there. And then price moves up, it breaks internal structure and it ends up re-delivering and rebalancing the uh, fair value gap, common fair value gap, by the way. If you're wondering what type of fair value gap this is, it's a common fair value gap. He's just been over his advanced gap theory. And that's what we did on the YM. 
NASDAQ, similar story. Um, I'll give you a narrative. So we open up the new financial day at 14,499 on the NASDAQ. We trade lower coming into Frankfurt. Frankfurt open takes out a, a wee bit of internal uh, of internal liquidity. So we trade above our opening price into a premium on the opening price, just above that big figure at 14,500. Coming into the London session, London opens lower and manipulates into our low of the day. And so our low of the financial day on the NASDAQ was made uh, on London open. Sorry, not on London open, but during the London open kill zone. And that's going to be between the hours of uh, three, sorry, two o'clock and five o'clock. Our London open kill zone is two o'clock to five o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time. Of course, the actual London Stock Exchange opens up at three. Frankfurt is at two. So if you hear me say Frankfurt, that's that's uh, the first part of what ICT calls the London open kill zone. Um, so our London open low ends up trading into a fair value gap that we had formed. Uh, the day prior and it's also going to be the mean uh, somewhere around the mean threshold of this order block let's see if we don't use the yeah so if we don't use the wicks and we use the bodies on this order block that is exactly what our London open low formed we come into this uh, common gap so common fair value gap here that we formed on Thursday in the p.m. session Price then comes back up, up to the 14,520 range, which breaks, which breaks structure. And we didn't end up actually leaving a uh, fair value gap that I, no, we did, we did. So we form a model 22, because we have a market structure shift that leaves a very tiny fair value gap at 14,494 uh, evens. We end up trading back into it, and then price is off to the races. We have an impulse move, all the wicks all the way up to, to uh, 687. And then after our impulse move during the AM session coming into New York lunch, we come and run some stops. We hit, uh, we hit bounce off this structure, this order block, and we ended up um, coming back into a fair value gap. So we actually had another Model 22 entry, and it comes all the way back down, and it hits uh, the it hits the mean threshold of this order block here that I'm highlighting. We then move back higher and this swing terminus is right around the mean threshold not right around it is exactly at the mean threshold of this order block that we formed at 11 o'clock so we end up hitting our swing terminus in the PM session right at the mean threshold of this order block um, and then trading back down into this fair value gap that I'm highlighting with my cursor um, I'm not going to go over the Russell 2000 your futures. I think the last one I want to talk about. Everything else was pretty uh, was pretty quiet today. Um, gold was quiet. Copper actually made a pretty decent move. So let's talk about copper. I'll give you a narrative on copper today. So copper. Let's see what our New York opening price was so our New York opening price on copper was 3783 that's three spot 783 and then coming into our uh, pre Frankfurt session we ended up making our low before the London open kill zone at uh, three spot 7695 which traded into a prior day's order block price then comes up and breaks internal structure it, we trade above our uh, midnight opening price. The Frankfurt's the Frankfurt open is just this little doji candle right here, forming a tiny little order block. And then let's see on our London open. London open is a substantial um, impulse move up that that takes out a lot of liquidity to the left. I think it would have been virtually, if we're following our rules on copper, right? So we're not trading until after Frankfurt open. Uh, you wouldn't have gotten in on this first overnight move on copper, uh, you, which, you know, it is what it is. So London Open is a large impulse move. We then consolidate and form some 15-minute structure, which ends up being broken uh, just at the end of the, of the London Open kill zone. 
we break structure, we form, uh, we trade back, excuse me, trade back down to the bottom of the fair value gap that the London Open displacement formed, bounce off of that. We trade not quite to the consequent encroachment of this wick that I'm highlighting. Copper then uh, copper then makes another impulse move coming into uh, in the overnight session prior to our uh, New York kill zone or New York AM session. So just prior to our New York AM session we make another new uh, high on copper and then coming into the New York uh, New York open kill zone we're trading uh, back down and price during at 945 ends up finding support let's see so we end up coming back would you look at that y'all I know this is crazy it's gonna be crazy stuff but watch this remember that inefficiency that I highlighted about 30 seconds ago well the copper price this swing down that we had in the New York open kill zone, what does it find support on? To pretty almost to the tick, right? So we're we're a couple pips off. Or I think we're one literally one pip off. We're one pip off. We wick down into the consequent occurrence. We re-deliver this long wick inefficiency, and then we trade back up nearly to our to our uh, our pre New York our overnight our overnight high basically. Uh, didn't quite get there, but there was a beautiful trade here. So let's say that you, you know, we're trying to be greedy with the entries, right? So we want to, we want to be in the damage it, as as much as we can. We want to be greedy with the entries and really think about, you know, where can we be in the damage? So I think you, I would have gotten. I'm, I'm sure many of you are, are not uh, trading the way that I am, but I like to, I like to be really greedy with the entries. So let's, I would have. I'm just t telling you, me personally, I would have definitely seen this, uh, and I'm not lying to you, I definitely would have seen this long wick, consequent encroachment. And then I think I probably would have targeted half of the move down, so that half of that move down, and that would have been a pretty decent trade right there. So we we trade right at that uh, consequent encroachment, and we aim for half of the leg down. That would have been a good trade on copper. I actually lost money on copper because I was trying to long it towards the end of the day. But then copper comes all the way back down, and now we we ended up resettling copper right at the, let's see, yeah, right at the consequent encroachment of this overnight uh, pre-Frankfurt um, consequent encroachment. So at three spots, seven, seven, one, five. So our day on copper, in my opinion, this is pretty much a seek and destroy profile because we're taking out both sides of the book repeatedly. So I would say this is, if anything, this is going to be a seek and destroy profile. And in order to trade this profitably, you would have had to have been, in my opinion, uh, in on limit orders towards the extremes of these ranges, which you know that's like that's how I pretty much am trading anyways. So copper made a decent move today. Gold, um, I'm not going to talk about gold. Didn't do a lot. Silver, uh, I wrecked myself on silver overnight, to be honest with you. I broke my rules, and that's that's why I had to write down the rules. Uh, crude oil, I did make some uh, fake money on crude oil today. So let's take a look. Let's give a narrative for crude oil. Let's take a look at our um, new financial day opening price. Okay. So... We open up crude oil at 70 spot 87. Coming into the London kill zone, we manipulate down uh, into the consequent encroachment of this uh, measuring gap. I'm going to say that this was a measuring gap here, a halfway gap. So we have a measuring fair value gap here. And we ended up ticking, bottom ticking, on the Frankfurt open. Okay, Frankfurt open. I think I maybe would have gotten this. Uh, I, I I can put a, an order in the market 15 minutes before Frankfurt, but probably not. I'm going to be honest with you. I probably wouldn't have hit this first this this uh, first consequent encroachment. So we have a measuring gap on the left, and then on our Frankfurt open, we bottom uh, end up bottom taking that coming into coming into our London open. Crude oil breaks a little bit of structure, leaves a small fair value gap. So that's a model 22. Model 22, so we 
come in, trade down, we take out sell site. That's the first cat that's the first criteria of a model twenty two. We take out sell side liquidity. We then have a market structure shift just before this is all within the same hour, just before the um, so we take out sell side, we then have a market structure shift that I'm highlighting with my cursor, trade back into this fair value gap. Now, you could have gotten long right at the fair value gap and taken very little heat on the trade. Okay, granted. Now let's say that we're being uh, greedy, right? We're being greedy with the entries, which I think you should be. Let's take a look if this is, yeah, it is. So there's two ways that you could have gotten in on this London Open in crude oil. So number one, this was a Model 22 entry. So right at the fair value gap, you could have been in at 70 spot 81. However, in addition to that, it traded down into the mean threshold of this little order block here. And if you're using the wicks of the order block, which with these shorter ones, uh, with the stout, the stout order blocks, I call them the stout order blocks. I, I like to use the wicks. It gives you a little bit more range. You could have been long here at 70 spot 76, which is pretty much the bottom tick of our London Open kill zone. So during the London session, crude oil uh, was targeting this high up here, and we ended up we ended up during the London session. We target that high at 71 spot 65, and at 5:15 New York local time, we sweep uh, we sweep this high at 71 spot 65, trade back down into an order block bounce off the order block and then right back up we end up uh, we end up forming uh, numerous equal highs up here right around 71 spot 65 price then coming into our New York kill zone we open up at 830 uh, with a, a long wicked inefficiency candle price then comes down it makes an impulse move lower leaving a common fair value gap we end up trading back down near our uh, near our London open low but not quite getting there we end up referencing this order block here that we formed on London consequent encroachment of that and our, it's also our midnight opening price so you could have gotten long here at 71 spot 87 we end up uh, wicking a little bit lower than that we actually wicked I think to the yeah the consequent encroachment of this long wicked candle that's a part of this order block that I'm highlighting with my cursor Consequent encroachment of that wick. That wick is going to be an inefficiency. And then right at uh, equities open, that's the bottom tick. That's the bottom right tick right there on um, on equities open. So uh, you, maybe you would have been hit with, hit by the spread. It's possible if you were like me and you're trying to be greedy with the entries. It's possible that you could have you could have hit the bottom tick on equities open. It's not impossible. And then. Price ends up coming back and targeting these buy stops on crude oil uh, just above, let's see, yeah, above that 71 spot 65, 71 spot 67 area. There, this was a pretty obvious uh, liquidity zone that crude oil was going to be attracted to. In addition to that, in addition to it being a liquidity zone, we come in and we're, we're re delivering a fair value gap here to the left. Now, could you have been in on prior to the move down in crude oil that we hit at 10:45? So during our New York AM session, could you have been in on uh, this move up and gotten in on a greedy order? Well, I think so because that's my friends. What is that? That's the consequent encroachment of an inefficiency to the left at 71 spot 74. Price ends up trading to 71 spot 77, uh, which is actually the I think that's the high of the inefficiency. Yeah. That's pretty much the high of the inefficiency, I think. One tick, yeah, it's one pip off the, uh, it's one pip off the high of uh, the high there. So you could have uh, gone short here, had a limit short here, the consequent encroachment of this uh, fair value gap to the left. And remember that you're trying to be greedy with your pending orders, because if you're trading 13 different products, one of them's probably going to hit your greedy your greedy entry. And then, in my opinion, let's see, short position. If we got short up here at uh, 71 spot 74, we could have put our stop, I don't know, up somewhere, somewhere up above that that candle up there. 
I think a decent conservative target where you want to start taking profits would have been down here. Because this is going to be the consequent encroachment of that. Uh, this is going to be an inefficiency here to our left, or the thing that I'm highlighting here. Um, and then you could have left a runner all the way down to the basically the low of the day. So let's say you're trading one, two, three crude oil contracts. You get short up at the consequent encroachment of this inefficiency to the left. You take the bulk of it off early. So you take like, let's say you're trading five contracts or crude oil, it's big. Let's say you're trading three contracts. You take three off somewhere around here where I'm highlighting with my cursor. So I would have personally targeted as my take profit. I would have targeted the consequent encroachment of this wick. So this would have been where I would take the multiple uh, the, the, the bulk, like two out of three contracts off. Leaving one contract to run, we ended up obviously running a lot further. And then where crude oil ended up uh, finding, coming near resettlement, this long wicked inefficiency here, crude oil ends up coming down to 70 spot 16, this uh, long wicked inefficiency in the order block here, highlighting with my cursor. And you could have actually gotten long on that, <laughs> believe it or not, the very end of the day. <laughs> so long on that and then make 20 cents, which 20 pips on crude oil is not bad. So I did see that, by the way. All right, that's crude oil for the day. Um, but the 10-year, I don't want to talk about the 10-year. I don't want to talk about natural gas. Let's talk about the dollar index. Okay, so dollar index. A new financial day opened up at 103, spot 406. Price trades around that New York, uh, around the opening price, 104, spot 103, spot 406. On our, our London Open, let's see, no, Frankfurt, London Open kill zone, Frankfurt opens up, takes out some stops, we trade down. Uh, just before our London open to, to 103 spot 350. I don't see anything to the left. Immediately obvious obvious inefficiency to me. Um, impulse move higher coming in the overnight session. We trade trade up into this inefficiency I'm highlighting on the left. Let's see, let's take the consequent encroachment of that. Yeah, so 103 spot 561 is the um, it is the consequent encroachment of this measuring gap. So this is a measuring gap. It's a midway gap that price did not come back and reprice to. So it left it open. Uh, so that's a measuring gap to the left. And then 103 spot 553, the midpoint is the midpoint of that measuring gap. We end up trading right up to it, just pipping slightly above it. And that's where the dollar found resistance. And then uh, I think we ended up opening up. Yeah, equities, 830 news release. Long wick back down to this prior range. And then, um, and then on our equities open, we're bouncing around this. Was this a Model 22? And this was probably a Model 22, yeah? Yeah, this was a Model 22. So Model 22 on the dollar index. So I'm going to highlight that for you. Market structure shift, leaving a fair value gap. Price comes back down, trades into that fair value gap. Remember, we took out sell side here, where I'm highlighting my cursor, I'm circling, took out sell side. And then we come back, market structure shift, we leave a fair value gap in the displacement. And then let's see if we made it all the way to the consequent encroachment. No, we did not. That's a that's going to be an IOFED entry. So we IOFED'd on... 103 spot, uh, yeah, 450 we'll call it, and then the dollar index ends up, now remember that with our fair value gap, especially our common gaps, everything that's not a breakaway gap, so your common gap or your measuring gap, price can reference that same point multiple times. So we actually ended up coming right back to that same measuring gap and we found uh, resistance there again. Now, looking where price actually wicked, it's going to be the consequent encroachment. Yeah. 
Consequent encroachment of this long wicked inefficiency that I'm highlighting, I'm going to put a yellow box on it. That's where the dollar index found resistance, right there. Long wicked inefficiency right here. And we found resistance at 103 spot 599. That's also right next to that big figure of 103 spot 6 on the dollar index. And then we resettle at 103 spot 553. So that was a review for the action today. I reviewed the ESYM, a little bit of NQ. Um, I also reviewed crude oil. I think crude oil gave you the best moves today. Uh, copper also had some interesting movement. And I also talked about the dollar index. And that uh, that's going to be about it, y'all. Have a good one.